Hello, everybody. Welcome to Beyond BMR. Of course, I'm your host, Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Thank you for joining us on this lovely Tuesday night. A balmy 61 degrees here in Michigan. Soon to turn 32 in two days with snow. How about that? Got a great show tonight. Monica Rollins joins myself and Krista. And Krista is joining me in Studio B, as always, from Missouri. Beyond BMR goes beyond the mysteries of the world. We're taking on a deep dive with Bigfoot, Dogman, aliens, alien abduction, the paranormal, time travel. How do all these things come full circle? I believe they do. Find out here. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to Bigfoot Michigan Rob on YouTube, the Blondes and the Booze Paranormal Podcast on YouTube. And, of course, Texas Front Porch found on YouTube. Wednesday nights, Bart and Nunnally and Humanoids. Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock, check out Bart and Letitia and the girls. They do a fantastic job over there. If you like our content, want to help support our channels, the Super Chat's open. It's a great way to show your love. Thank you so much. And, of course, if you want to become a BMR pirate for the low price of $2.99, reoccurring charges on your credit card. $2.99. You get a little picture of me with my bandana on. How about that? 55 members and growing, so thanks for that. Also, I want to thank all you guys once again for coming in. And um, got to scroll up here a little bit. I want to thank everybody who's bought my book. You all know it by now. Bigfoot Michigan Rock presents True Cryptid Encounters, book one, found on Amazon. The link is pinned in the chat. You can also find it on my YouTube channel. So thanks for that. If you've bought it already, when Amazon comes calling, do me a favor. Leave a review. It's all analytics these days, and it does help promote sales. Book two is coming out end of spring, early June, and I'm also working on a third book all about my weird and strange life from five years old into my current age. And I'm not going to give out my current age as of now, but maybe later I will. You can find that in the book. So thanks for that. Also, June 7th and 8th, Alabama Bigfoot Conference speaker lineup. Well, first, we got Tex Weston as the master of ceremonies. Barton Nunley, Daryl Denton, the Blondes and the Booze, Jason McLean, Greg Ogles, Martin Groves, and yours truly, BMR. Tickets $30 online, $35 at the door. That's at the Aniston Performing Arts Center. Again, in Alabama, June 7th is the meet and greet. It's already booked, but we will not turn you away. It's a restaurant. Come hang with us. They have some good times a day prior to the conference, which, of course, kicks off on the 8th. So, as I said, we have got a great show in store for you. Thanks for everybody for coming in. And I'm going to bring up Krista, making sure she's ready back there. Yeah, she's got a smile. She gave me the nod. <laughs> How are you? What's up? How you doing? I'm doing. It's Tuesday. Better than Monday. Tuesday is always better than Monday. Heck yeah, it is. You were talking about your weather. It's uh, My computer says 67. It was 81 on my way home from work. And it's supposed to get down to 27 tonight. So that's that's like, that's stupid crazy. That's stupid crazy. And like I said, 66, it hit 71 today. And then in two days, 30 degrees and snow. But, you know, it's February in Michigan. And Michigan's weather and again, you know, I always talk about Michigan weather. It sucks. It's it's up and down, and it's crazy. It's all over the place. So I hear you. Missouri used to be that way, but I'll tell you what, we haven't had hardly much snow or nothing. It's it's weird. It's been a weird winter. I I shovel once this year. I don't have a snowblower yeah. because the last several winters I haven't needed it, so I don't pull it out. Yeah, it's so. crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is crazy, and I want to thank, once again, everybody for coming on in. They're just starting to pour on in, and uh, yep. thanks for that. And, again, we got a great guest tonight. I'm mm -hmm. not going to uh, waste any more time speaking about the weather. Sounds good. I'm going to bring up Monica. Hello? Hello. Hello, Hello Monica. Hello. I, you know, I just noticed our paranormal world. That's yeah. going to be another featured show coming up pretty soon, eh? With uh, the Texas Front Porch Group, I guess. Yeah, I'm on his platform. I think um, co-hosts are going to switch out as you, you're available. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's going to start March 28th. 
Okay, cool. awesome. Seven p.m. That's the that's the debut show. So oh, awesome. I really um, hope that everybody comes over and just just takes a peek and sees what it's about. Yeah, oh, yeah well, for sure. Well, We'll definitely, I'll definitely get that on my schedule and start promoting it um, starting probably Thursday when I have my show Thursday. Yep. So, yeah, just give me the time, and that's going to be on a, 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 is it going to be, have you decided on a day, a specific day to mm -hmm. lock into already? It's Thursdays at, uh, yeah, Thursdays at 7 Central. Excellent. That's a good time. So, so 8 for me, 8 o'clock and East for me, good. Yep. It's before my bedtime. So that's, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, when she goes off, Blondes and Booze comes on. So that's right. Well, yes, they do. You know, and speaking of that, Krista, Mondays is Texas Front Porch, 8 to 11. First hour is Daniel Diva. And Tex takes over with Brandy. They talk what they talk about cryptids, the paranormal, and such. Tuesdays is this show, Beyond BMR, 9 o'clock in the East. Wednesdays, uh, Barton Nunley in Humanoids, 9 o'clock in the East. Thursdays, brunch with Bigfoot, Michigan Rob, 1 o'clock in the East. Then Thursday night, the Blondes and the Booze Paranormal Podcast, 9 o'clock in the East. And then you got more woo. If you want some woo with the booze, you get them Friday. They back it up an hour to 8, 8 o'clock in the East. And then um, what else? Tex. Tex has got something going on on Sunday. Uh, Truth or Tinfoil. But that's also a channel with Randy and Brandy. Mm -hmm. They stream with Tex. That's it, I believe, at 5 in the East. And then uh, Tex, right after that, does his uh, infamous minds. That's true true crime. So, uh, Well, you got that pretty much down pat, Rob. Got to say. Sure do. Yeah, well, I got to add another one. So, and look how uh, long it's, look how long, how much it has changed over the it, last it year, too. Changed, it has changed. It's changed quite a bit. We haven't, though. Neither of you. No, I've been doing <laughs> Tuesday nights for a year. And yeah. I've been doing Thursday nights for two years. Yeah, we've been doing. Yeah, so Thursday I don't change. The only day off is when I have no internet, I get a storm, or Thanksgiving, because the Thursday shows is always Thanksgiving, and I take off Thanksgiving. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Sure do. So, so Monica, again, welcome to the platform. Welcome to the show. And uh, you sent me a cool bio. Monica's bio is awesome. It's in the uh, description of this show. 22 years uh, in Bigfoot research and paranormal. And um, that's amazing, 22 years. I've been doing this five years. Chris has been doing it longer than five. About 15. 15. And uh, the easy, the easy uh, softball question, why? How did you get started in this? There's always an interesting story behind all this. Yeah. Well, usually there is, but I, I really, it's my whole life. Like I grew up in uh, Northern California and uh, I grew up with a family that was very open-minded with this kind of thing. My grandfather specifically, he always would tell us stories about, um, you know, Bigfoot. He was just fascinated by anything mm -hmm. interesting and unusual and, he encouraged that in my brother and I. So I grew up with those stories. And then, of course, you know, where I grew up, you just have those legends anyway, uh, floating around out there. And people saw this and mm -hmm. this and that. And, you know, Scooby-Doo had a healthy influence. <laughs> with oh, the yeah. That's, that's, man, that's the original scare show. Well, it we did. Mm -hmm. I'll still watch it. And, I we mean, do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's my Absolutely. favorite. The Shaggy, the Shaggy Mobile. Yeah. Love that. I wish I would have had an actual Shaggy mobile. The mystery machine. Well, yeah, you know, yeah the I, oh yes, the mystery machine. We yeah. have a friend who actually had the original mystery machine by Hannah Barbara, and uh -huh. he just sold it last year. Got our friend Robin Terry, who owns Ashmore Estates. So he was able to retire last year, is what you're telling me. Yeah. Well, he got rid of the mystery machine. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, growing up with all of that and the, just the geographically where I live, mm -hmm. um, that started my interest in, well, Bigfoot, but then, you know, that blooms into everything else. And I can't even tell you what it is that made me interested in the paranormal ghosts, mm -hmm. you know, ghosts and goblins and all that stuff. I just, I've always my whole life been drawn to, you know, strange and unusual. Yeah. You know, 
and again, you know, I always say that because someone always has a story. But I will say this. I started this because I had an encounter. But I've had encounters since I was five, like I alluded to earlier. But I've always, growing up, though, I always was fascinated with monsters and ghosts mm -hmm. from very early age. Very, very yeah. early influences with the black and white vampire movies with Bella Lugosi. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. and then Lon Chaney, the Wolfman, and Boris Karloff, Frankenstein's monster. So I was right away already into it. Mm -hmm. It's just that I didn't know that I'd be years later talking about it on a pretty much on a weekly basis, you know, right? which I, which is awesome. And that's fun. That's great. I mean, I remember growing up thinking, how can I, you know, take all of this interest that I have and turn that into a way to make a living? You know, like parapsychology was interesting to me. And yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> there's really no way to make a living into it unless you're tap dancing on TV for the regular. And back then that wasn't a thing. Right. You know, so right. I just remember, yeah, going into college thinking, well, how can I, yeah. I can figure it out? So I just do it on the side, just kept those interests up, read mm -hmm. all the books, you know, focusing on, on folklore. I love folklore, right? Yeah. From all around the world, uh, Native American folklore, mm -hmm. uh, Irish folklore, uh, all yeah. of that just really held my interest. Japanese, like Southeast Asian, to an extent, not as much, but a little bit. You know, I think across the board, too, I know Krista likes folklore. I love folklore. We have a lot of guests on that are into folklore. Mm -hmm. And I always ask, do you, th I think that folklore, there's some truth behind all folklore, right? I mean, if it started 1800 years ago, these stories weren't just made up. They came from a source. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of them have evolved maybe into something more than it should be but there's a, there's something behind a story of folklore that has to me some truth behind it i agree now whether or not the the little nugget that starts the whole folklore is is truly something that's paranormal or if it's just cautionary tales that evolve um it, it could be something like that but I, I i agree they all start with some grain of truth i mean i believe Almost every story starts with a grain of truth. Yeah, I, I think so too. I would agree. Uh, you you mentioned that you were from Northern California. Mm -hmm. Have you ever visited the Patterson Gimlin site or? Well, I have not been to the. I had the opportunity to go and I just I wasn't able to do it. Gotcha. Um, I haven't been to the site. I've been in the area of awesome. it. I mean, I used to camp regularly. I don't know if you guys remember the Skookum Cast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Back in the day, so. You know, I did the um, Monster Quest episode out there basically at the Skookum cast. And then we would go back, a, a group of friends and I would go back every year for several years. Awesome. So, you know, I spent a lot of time up in that area. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. You know, I did a, a story on the Skookum cast. And, you know, it took me forever to find information on that. I wonder if I was looking up the wrong looking in the wrong areas because I even made, I even made mention of that when I did a show, it took me forever to find up info. But then after I did the show, I found it all over the place. That was like, mm -hmm. whatever. Oh yeah. I, I can take you there. I can drive you right up next to the mud pit and be like, it was right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's another thing that Mark. Now, are you still in Northern California? No, I'm in Texas right now. Yeah. yeah. I love California. 30 mm -hmm. years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Do you have any monsters down there in Texas? Sure. Yeah, we got Bigfoot down here, and we've got Dogman, uh, lots of aliens, uh, all kinds of mm -hmm. like weird little critters. There's a lot of um, Native American folklore, like with the little people and deer woman, yeah. you know that kind of that kind of thing. Uh, I live up near Lake Texoma, and I'm hearing, I, mean, I haven't really heard this before, but you know, I spent a lot of time on TikTok, just kind of, you know, spooky TikTok and mm -hmm. things. And um, I know that Bigfoot Society had been running this little series about Lake Texoma and, you know, people are, are sending in the reports to him and they're reporting um, not just Bigfoot, which I would expect around that, but um, like aquatic cryptids that I've oh, wow. never heard of. So, I mean, all of that's a little fascinating to me. I need, I need to dig a little yeah. harder into that. Yeah. Do you get to get out very much to the woods anymore? Or? Um, I do when I can. Um, the last several years work has just been pounding me. 
<laughs> I don't have as much time as I used to to get out. Uh, but we, I mean, my husband's into the research as well, so we get out as much as we can. Yeah, and it's great. I mean, it's great to have you know a partner that yeah that doesn't sure. look at you sideways when you talk about. I mean, he's a Bigfoot researcher, and when I had my Dogman encounter, I don't I'm not going to say he called me a liar, but I think it was harder for him to believe in that, which is so interesting to me that people will believe in a you know monkey running like an eight foot ape running around the woods but i tell you that i saw like a bipedal wolf and i'm mm, I don't know about that. right yeah. right right yeah. i had like a really good friend of mine say you you don't know what you saw you didn't see that you just don't know what you what you saw wow and i was like woman i've been you know out for a long time i mean i, I don't spend every weekend in the woods but right. i'm pretty sure i know what i saw Right. right. Yeah. That, that when people say, oh, you know, you saw a bear or, or it was this or it was that, you know, and it's like, you know, people aren't stupid. Yeah. You know, they know the difference between a bear and a dog. Good yeah. Goodness. And this was in an urban setting. Like you, it, it, it is nowhere that I would be looking for a bear to be running at my car. Right. You know? Right. It's complete. It, it was just so, and I was so upset that, you know, this person said that to me. I was like, oh, this. Yeah. Can you talk about your your dog man encounter? Yeah. yeah. Um, let, let us do that. But first, thanks, Scott, for re-upping for another month, becoming a BMR pirate. And he also gifted five awesome. Bigfoot memberships. Well, right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scotty. Yeah. I had to get that out there before I forgot, Monica. So that's cool. You gotta say it when you remember it. I have yeah. to <laughs> even though even though I can, I can actually look it up, but you know. It's I awesome. want to get that up before you get into this fabulous dog band. Account. I want to be a pirate. Arr, well, <laughs> Actually, I remember one year we were in Skookum and we had the radio going because you get no, there. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. And um, <laughs> it was so funny. Like the only radio station we could get on this little tiny radio we had was like Playboy News or something like that. And it was just, it was a Playboy channel, but it was like news. Yeah, it was like tongue in cheek kind of thing. And it was National Pirate Day. So yeah. I just remember being in Skooka Meadow and we were all Arr. Arr. <laughs> Arr. pirate jokes in there all day. Right. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> awesome. Well, if right. you be, well, I know Chris is a pirate. If you become, what would you guys be called? Wenches? What's the pirate name for a female? Oh, hopefully not a wish. No, I know, not a wish. <laughs> like, okay, BMR. You're my, uh, I don't know what I'd call you guys. Pirate S. Pirate S? Pirate S? I don't know. Pure S? <laughs> <laughs> the pies. Yeah. Give us a note to think on it, and, and Monica and I will come up with something. We'll let you know. Sorry about that, Monica. Okay, I get distracted sometimes. That's how the show rolls sometimes. <laughs> You gotta go where your mind takes you. I gotta that's right. That's right. I understand. That's right. Because these yeah. shows are not scripted. We, we're off the cuff. No. I like so, it better like that. Yeah, me I too. Do too. Uh so my my encounter happened in I mean, I want to say it was Christmas time of 2014. I'm pretty sure it was 2014. Um and I was driving to pick my daughter up one night from work. And it was about like 11, 1130 at night. Mm -hmm. And it happened in like the most unusual place, like nowhere you would ever expect to see something like this. Because when I say it was urban, I mean, it was inside of Dallas city limits. It was urban, mm -hmm. but it was in a fairly affluent part of the city where there are larger estates and a lot of woods and creeks. And I had turned down a side street um, that dead ends into the place that my daughter was employed at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I turned onto this road, there are no real street lights here. And like I said, there's, there's sizable estates, you know, on either side of me. And there is one single, one single street light, maybe I'm really bad at distance, mm -hmm. maybe 30 yards down the road. And as I turned, I hadn't even really started picking up speed yet. I saw movement off to the side, right? And it, it was kind of low to the ground and, you know, loping like a dog mm -hmm. running. So I was thinking, oh, shit, there's a dog running into the road in front right. of me, right? So I didn't really lay on the gas because the trajectory, it was coming towards the front of my car. So I'm just slowing down. 
And then the dog's direction turns. And as it's getting closer, it starts, instead of running, it starts like almost like bounding, like hopping kind of. And I'm thinking that's ah, really weird. And it's, it's fast. And it ends up landing, like hopping high. And then it lands uh, maybe 15 feet from my passenger side of the car. Wow. And it, it lands in like what I call a runner stance. So it lands with one arm kind of down and one arm up, like it's like balancing as it lands. And I'm turning to look at it. And the entire time, the closer it gets, this this sense of um, like dread and evil, like it, it's very hard to describe because I have never experienced anything else mm -hmm. like in my life. And it's just this overwhelming wave of just evil and danger, like danger, right. evil, danger, danger, danger. And it's coming out of nowhere. And at first I'm thinking, you know, it's a dog, but it's, it's so hard to describe this intense feeling that was just mm -hmm. aimed at me. Sure. And when it landed, I'm turning to look at it. And inside my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I'm looking and I can clearly see what it is at this point. And I'm like, don't look directly at it. You can't unsee that. Then my mind is telling me like, you can't unsee that. You can't unsee that. Like, do you want to look at that? You know what, you know what this is, but you can't unsee it if you look like in its eyes. And I just remember it landed, like I said, in the runner stance. And then I, I can't remember if it put its arm down all the way or started to lower its arm. But I remember it was kind of half crouching. And as my car was coming by, it lowered itself to look into my passenger's window. Mm -hmm. And it just like was looking right at me, just followed me. Mm -hmm. as I rode by. It didn't move its body, but it was turning its head, like kind of watching me drive by. Yeah. And, and it, this was up by the side of your car? It was probably 10, 15 feet. Like okay. 15 feet, I would yeah. say. Close enough. Yeah, that's pretty close. Oh, yeah. 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 And um, I snapped out of it and, you know, slammed on the gas and just took off. Because at that point, I had never really gained speed. Because I'm only, like, I don't know, 20 feet from the turn. Like, I'm not far down this road. Mm -hmm. And I just, like I said, I snapped out of it, slammed on the gas and took off. I ran every stop sign there was from there to the end of the road where my daughter's place of employment was. And I, I can't remember if I screamed or not, but I remember I was terrified from that just evil danger sure. feeling that I was getting what I saw. And then I'm thinking, you know, I couldn't look in the rear view mirror because at any moment I was convinced I was going to feel this thing, like jump on the back. Oh, of for sure. Wow. And I'm thinking there are no street lights out. Like it is dark over where I am. And I'm yeah. you know, they're gonna find my car like crashed on the side of the road. There's gonna be blood everywhere. Nobody's gonna know what happened. Like I was terrified. Sure. And I remember pulling up into the parking lot where my daughter worked and I turned around and you know, had the car facing the direction I had just come, the street. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, is it gonna follow me? Is it gonna chase me? Like, am I gonna see this like werewolf? Like the dog man thing, like come walking out of this residential neighbor. Like, <laughs> wow. And then I also remember getting home and I'm worrying the whole way home. I would not drive back down that way. We took like the long way around to get home. And I pulled, you know, up to my house and I'm, I'm scared. I'm like, can that thing smell me? Could it, could it scent me? Like right. can it trace me back to where I live, like by okay. scent. And I, I had a lot of questions. And at that point I used to run at night because, you know, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I tried to go running like not long after that. Like I was so shocked and scared. Like mm -hmm. I was afraid to walk from my car to my back door for the longest time. Wow. And when I did get up the courage to go running at night, um, I, I, I got about halfway through my route and I had to turn around and like, I just went home. Because every like leaf scratching across the pavement, every rustle in the bush, I was convinced this thing was going to pop out of the bushes at me. Wow. And what's interesting though is, you know, I'm terrified. Like I'm scared. I'm scared to walk to my back door. I'm scared to go running in my neighborhood at night. But about six months after that, I had like a group camping trip with a bunch of friends at the Skookum Meadows place, right? Clearly we're up in the mountains 
trees everywhere, very, you know, remote. I wasn't, mm -hmm. that didn't scare me. I wasn't scared walking around the woods at night there, but I was scared running through my neighborhood because I had wow. this in an urban right. space. Yeah. Did you know what it was when you first saw it? Yeah. Yeah. You did. Yeah. I, I mean, it was like curious. I didn't think it was like, they look like werewolves. Mm -hmm. And that's like what you think in your mind, because I mean, it looked, you know, it had the, the snout, the snout wasn't super long, but it was definitely extended. Mm -hmm. It had the pointy ears. I remember oh, yeah. the, I remember the street light was shining on it. So I remember like the, the light around the finer hair or fur, yeah. whatever you call it. And I remember it had like, like the hyena hump on the back of it. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And like, I couldn't tell you about its legs cause I don't remember it ever like stood up and, mm -hmm. or its hands. Cause I wasn't like looking at that. But I remember like, just, I remember, I remember the snout, the ears, the, the light on the hair and the, the kind of hump wow. on the back. Wow. How scary. That is scary, and that's kind of typical, and that's why I love doing shows like this because the data to me is important in a lot of these instances. I've had, i fielded reports from a lot of people and, and seen other shows where a lot of them talk about these dog men or, or running up alongside their mm -hmm. car, and I, I feel that a couple, were, they had the same thing, and the reason I asked how far, where it was, I had a guy telling me that he was doing maybe 20 miles an hour down a dirt road, and he's seen this wolf in the back of his car on, on all fours start running at him. And he says, from the back, and it was gaining speed. And he says, that is the biggest wolf I've ever seen. And then he lost sight of it out of his rearview mirror. And he's like, oh, well, cool, or whatever. But he wasn't scared because he figured it was just an oversized wolf. Right. And all of a sudden, he sees this thing on the side of its car on four legs. And then it kind of got up on two legs running. And the head was over the roof of the car, yeah. and the thing crouched down and looked almost in his windshield, in, in through his side his right. window. And he wow. says the creepiest thing was, and you know this is kind of an maybe it's impossible. I've never noticed it with dogs. He said the thing smiled at him, a sinister Ugh. like smile. Can you imagine? And had a snout. Can you imagine how it curled no. up? <laughs> he said it curled up. It looked really odd. Mm -hmm. And he almost felt like the thing told him he could get him. Well, but he kind of like a mind speak thing. Kind of like that. Yeah. 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 And then the guy just floored it. The thing kept up with him for a little bit. And then it just trailed off into the wood line and disappeared into the woods. Wow. Can you imagine that? I mean, yours was scary, Monica. Don't get me wrong. That was scary as heck. Can you imagine yeah. being that close? And stand up, you can't see it, but it's body, then it looks down. Oh, that smiling is creepy. I mean, but that, smiling. I mean, I will say that, like, that whole, I don't even know what to call it, just that feeling. It was just like washing, <laughs> like waves washing over me. And like I said, I've never felt anything like that. Before. So before you saw it, did you get that feeling? Or Not before I saw it, you know, yeah. as I was doing something, and I'm still thinking, you know, it's, a dog and you know the more i turn my head it, it tr changes direction and, and mm -hmm. started coming towards the front of my car it started coming towards the passenger side of my car wow and, um yeah that i mean the whole thing was terrifying you know it's so it's almost sounds cliche today to say that you get this feeling of dread or being watched from around the woods and it's either some sort of cryptid or as barton would say in humanoid and um and yeah, because you don't get that feeling, even if, if bears are in your area throughout the woods, you don't get the feeling yeah. that, or you're creeped out or being watched. And I mean, and, yeah, I you mean, get, you, you might you get apprehensive it. knowing a predator yeah. may be around you, but a predator that we all know about, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've had I've had bears come up on me in the dark. I had a bear because I was sitting, you know, up in Washington on a. I, I keep. I, I keep mentioning Skookum in the show, sorry. That's but we were on one of the back roads there. And it was pitch black, you know. And there's woods very close on either side because we're on a literally a, like a fire road. And I was just sitting in the back of the truck, no lights. I could hear something coming at me, you know, off to the side. It was pretty big. I figured it was a bear. It was either a bear or an elk. But I didn't hear any bugling. So mm -hmm. I started hearing the the uh, the jaw pop that bears do. You know, mm -hmm. get closer and start popping, yeah. you know, huffing. So, you know, you have that apprehension. Even before I heard it popping its jaw, you know that there's a larger animal 
right. causing the predator. You get those instincts, right? You know when something's not right. And this is not this the sense of something's off. You know, if you go into um, a home with paranormal activity, let's say a haunted house or, or it, just an area that's got, you know, maybe some some bad vibes mm -hmm. going on there, right? It's not a bad vibe. This was this was beyond dread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, yes. So somebody made a comment in chat and and I was thinking something maybe a little different, but you know, this could be a good point too. Let me find it here real quick. He said, it's like they project that feeling onto you so they can feed on your fear, mm. which is a, which is a good a point. Right. But then you know, I was thinking, well, maybe like your, your spidey senses, you know, something was, was warning you, you, you know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you, you hear about, um, you know, spidey senses for sure. And I think that that's your spidey senses come in when you just, you know, bad vibes, spidey yeah. senses, that's what you right. get. Yeah. This was so like directed, you know, yeah. I, I just feel like it was like uh, there it, victim or possible. Vic I, I don't know what it was thinking, of course, but you know, I, like I said, I've been in the woods with predators around me. Yeah. You know, I've never had that. And, you know, a lot of people talk um, in Bigfoot, especially about infrasound. Mm -hmm. Right and how you can have that directed at you. And I don't even think that this was that because the 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 feelings you get with infrasound are usually, you know, nausea, you don't get, mm -hmm. you know, you feel but mm -hmm. something's off, you know, and you right. might be a little nauseous, but you know, again, this was, um, this was so beyond any of that. Like the only thing I could say is it's like evil. It was evil. Mm -hmm. It was like pure maliciousness. Like it did not mean me anything good. And it was just yeah, evil. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I haven't come across anybody tell me a story where they felt good about a dog, man. I just seen mm -hmm. somebody, a newer person in chat says she's read stories where dog men befriended people. I never heard that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but sure. I, would, I mean, I, can, anything could happen, you guys. You know, I, I personally wouldn't want to befriend a dog, man. Just I would you. not want to befriend one because I, I, I associate them with an evil. I don't even associate mm -hmm. them as a, uh, a living and breathing animal. To be honest with you, in a lot of these mm -hmm. cases, what's your thoughts yeah. on that, Monica? Whether it's flesh and blood, yeah, or, or we're talking about dog man now. We're not going to forget about Bigfoot for the time being. Sure, um, you know, I, I have always been in a very much um, flesh and blood camp, right? Mm -hmm. There has to be some um, biological behind it, but this mm -hmm. thing that I saw, I, I don't, I don't know what to think. Like, I really don't. I, I, I don't know what to. To think now, yeah. I don't really necessarily believe in portals. You know, I don't think that you know cryptids are, you know. Oh, Monica, we're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna. I have know, to talk. but I mean, but with this experience, where did this come from? I'm in the middle of Dallas. You know, I mean, yes, I'm in a yeah. suburb with creeks and rivers and all that, but you know, something that large, I just really have a hard time believing that it would be navigating that terrain unnoticed. <laughs> I can yeah. I can buy that though. I, I mean that's that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It does. A lot of sense. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, you're talking about, you know, you're you live around Dallas and I've been through Dallas. That's a big city. I live outside of St. Louis and there's I've heard of a dog man encounter down by the St. Louis Arch and it's very populated. And mm -hmm. you know, so I don't believe that they are just in the woods or you know, I believe they're in the suburbs and our cities too. Yeah, I have a friend who's like, you know, you you were in a pretty affluent area and he believes uh, wholeheartedly that, you know, some of the more uh, people with generational wealth, let's say, are involved in some practices that could be pulling things into this dimension, sure. you know, for their own purposes. And this yeah. thing either got loose or they set it loose or something like that. You know, he's right. 100 percent believing. And I. I can't, I, can't, I mean, I guess that's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There's some scary yeah. stuff out there and don't have to there be is. just in our woods, you know? <laughs> there is. We don't, and we just, we got, I'll have you on it some other times. And I'll, now that you're part of the clan, the clan, I'll be talking with you. But I think that, um, you know, when it comes to dog, I do believe in portals. I do believe in a the quantum theory with a lot of, a lot of things out there. Mm -hmm. But I also can believe this though. I can believe that a dog man is a flesh and blood creature, but it's taken over by something demonic. 
Like you mm-hmm. heard about the devil dog. You've heard about what's the other dip, um, what's the other dog? Hounds of hell or the dog? Yeah, like Cerberus that? and Hounds of Hell. He's like yeah, yeah. Son of Syphili. <laughs> now I don't even know what I don't even want to go there. You know what that is? I can't say that I have heard that. Yeah, I'm not going to speak on it right now because I don't have my facts together. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, I think they can be a lot of everything. Just like I think Mm -hmm. Sasquatch or Bigfoot. You know, you have First Nations people that talk about Sasquatch being a a spirit of the forest, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have people saying they're all flesh and blood. I'm in both. I'm in the camp that they're flesh and blood, but I think that there's something supernatural about them as well. You know, Mm -hmm. what I saw, again, just like, you're talking about your encounter. What I saw, there was something going on there because I didn't get hit with infrasound. I got hit with something where I lost like everything. Time stood still. I, I saw my vision turn from color to black and white. I could not move. I was paralyzed. Hmm. And someone said, Rob, that was infrasound. Well, I tell you what, if that was infrasound, they, they jacked it up about a thousand, you know, megabytes or whatever. <laughs> Right. Because it's so, but I've heard the stories about people riding horses getting nauseous with, with a Bigfoot around or a dog mm-hmm. man. So, yeah. Well, yours, what you've seen, it was, you know, yours was kind of, I just you, you say it, but like on the woo side, you know, it because it did morph was. into something that. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard my story and I'm not going to bore it. Well, I'm not going to say my story, but my story, it looked like a human being. A weird human and then all of a sudden trans it's tra- it metamorphosis and i don't want to get into this on my show i want you to talk about your stuff i'll just show you this right quick boom that's oh. the one on the left's what i saw this is done by sibylla irwin I love this that. is not 93 accurate the one on the left is what i saw initially and then the one on the same guy when he decides to yell roar and scream at metamorphosis to the one on the right and you can know it's a big difference there Mm-hmm. Holy yeah. moly, it looks like a vampire. Yeah, yeah, I see. So that ain't no Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one on the left looks like a, a a human kind of, in a way. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of uh, the good guy from Goonies with the off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, that's what I saw in 2018. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and that's kind of why I'm doing this today, you know. Sure. And, and I was like didn't know who I was for a while when I saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something. You're like, that's so I'm good. always the confused one still when it, when we debate flesh and blood, paranormal, dimensional. I mean, the best uh, I can say is I don't know because I can see both camps, right? I can right. see the logic yeah. on both sides. Yeah, there are some things that are, you know, a little extreme for me, but again, if you experience something, I'm not going to tell you that you didn't. Absolutely. Right. You know, that's where we're at, too. Yeah. And that's why I love these shows, because I don't care what your beliefs are. We'll talk about it, and, and everybody wow. learns. You know, this is kind of like a learning channel for everybody. And just I like always, bars, just like yeah. the girls, like text. It's all about learning. Mm-hmm. And I suspect our paranormal world, debuting March 28th, will be just kind of around the same the same thing, right? Yeah. I just want to talk. I want to, I, I mean, I love hearing other people's stories, right? And it took me a long time to tell that dog man story because like, you know, I've been in in research for a long time and I have a reputation of being very sane (laughs) and very, you know, level headed and rational in my thought. And, you know, people come to me when they want advice because they know I'm going to be honest and level headed and just Mm -hmm. be truthful. And that story, especially with the reaction, the first person I told was my friend who was like, oh, you don't know what you saw. You you didn't see that. You know, it really upset me. And then my husband telling me, well, okay, like, you know, he he didn't tell me a liar, but he wasn't like, oh, my gosh, tell me more. You know, like, I want to hear all that. You know, whereas, you know, my my best friend up in Ohio, when I told her and her husband, they flipped out. They were like, holy cow. Like, if you told us you saw that, you saw that. I mean, that's, yeah, you know, that's, that's, yeah, probably would have been a little more vocal about it if that I had gotten that reaction at first. But the first two people I tell that are close to me are kind of, 
yeah, okay, yeah, you right. know. And then the reputation I had, I just, I didn't tell anybody. I told maybe, you know, just a handful of people. And I was like, yeah, I didn't want everybody to know because I'm thinking, nobody's going to believe me. That sounds cuckoo. Are you? Yeah, <laughs> right. you know. But here, if you would have said, well, I saw a Bigfoot, it might have been oh, more yeah. accepted, you know? Yeah. 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 And that's just the thing, you know, we've all been through this that have had these experiences and I says, who do I tell? You know, who do I not tell? Yeah. I didn't tell anybody for a long time. Right. Because quite frankly, my story is crazy. What happened? Mm -hmm. That's why I say I take everyone's stories and yeah, and they haven't walked in their shoes. Like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Cause you weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and that I, really changed my mind because I mean, like I said, in the earlier days of my research, I was critical of yeah. reports. I would try to debunk you no matter what you said. I was trying to catch you in something. I mean, you know, I was I was rigid. <laughs> and yeah. then this happened to me, and I'm like, you know, I need to, you know, calm down <laughs> because nobody's right. gonna believe me. I do think though. It's kind of good for all of us to check ourselves. And, and if something mm -hmm. happens, every time I get something happen to me, I try to kind of debunk it or try to figure it out or have the healthy right. skepticism. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just going to say, oh, yeah, wow, this, this is what this was. I always say I had a Bigfoot encounter. Was it really a Bigfoot to this day? I don't tell people. Right. I mean, yeah, my Bigfoot encounter, because that fits. What else am I supposed to call it? But I still don't know what exactly it was. Sure. Yeah, sure. You know. You know, yeah. and, and everybody should be critical of not only the evidence presented to them, but their own, you know, like when I, I hear something or I see something or I've had one of my, you know, the, the strange things that I've seen along the way or experienced along the way. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to be rational, right? You have to be like, well, what else could it be? Like, could it be this? Could it be that? I don't know. If right. you don't know, you don't know. Don't try to force it into a box it doesn't belong in. Right. It's the big thing, too. Wow. Yeah. <gasps> We, we all, uh, you know, you know what you said, and, and and that's a lot of reason why people don't come out. There are so many. Can you imagine how many people are out there keeping their mouth quiet because the ones that have saw a, a dog man or a Bigfoot yeah. and they just don't talk about it because, right. you know, like reasons such as yourself, you know? Yeah, they don't want to be looking crazy and they don't want the criticism. I mean, you know, it gets around my work, no matter where I am, that, you know, I'm into Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. and Bigfoot right. seems to be the, the big yeah. topic for me. I mean, it's what I research. Me a long right. Time. right. So that's like hilarious. That, that, that's that got some mileage. No matter well, what. you know, I, I will tell you this. Once you get out enough, because I the very first time I told my story, I was like, nervous and, and just i did a crappy job and i was just oh my god people, nobody believes me and i felt all bad about myself I, I really was messed up i you guys i'll leave it at that then i finally you know start finally got a hold of some good people that i could trust because the first bunch of idiots that i came across were nothing but liars and just people that were just pulling my chain right Mm -hmm. And it, I quickly figured out who those people were. Then I finally found uh, some people, and then I started talking more and more about it and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. and now and then I owned a bar, and I would have, hey, have you had a Bigfoot or a paranormal encounter? Want to be anonymous? I had a glass jar, and I was not doing a show. I had a glass jar, put it in, and then I started telling people about uh, mm -hmm. my encounters at the bar. And then I even took it a step further, and I had another section of my bar was just for people that wanted to watch paranormal stuff on YouTube. You could go in there and we would watch on TV. Oh, that's Dave cool. Scott, that I had Dave cool. Scott from Space. I met Dave Scott from Space Cell Radio. I was a big fan of his for a long time. And so we'd, uh, we'd have SOR Saturday or not SOR. Mm -hmm. One of the nights, the one during the week where he would go on and I, and yeah, and he would acknowledge me to everyone in the bar. It was, it was really cool. But yeah. So, and I got more comfortable with it and, then I got to the point today where I don't care what people believe in me. You know, I got 25 encounters with the paranormal, and Krista knows five of them. Yeah, only so, five. I thought I knew them all. I, I got, you know, I got to be doing this for a long time. I can't give out all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I definitely got to the point where I, whatever, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Yep. Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
you know, know, yeah. You believe I mean, me, you believe me. If you don't, you don't. If you know me, if you and you've known me for a long time, and a lot of people in in the Bigfoot research, especially, have known me for a long time. You know that I'm an honest person. I have no reason to lie. I have no reason to ruin right. my reputation over a lie. You know, and if the people that don't know me, you know, whatever. You believe me or you don't. I'm not here to right to yeah. convince anybody. Yeah, I mean, just like you know, when my yeah, show. Definitely. You know, when our paranormal world starts uh, going, I just I really want to be a place for people to just share mm -hmm. what they're feeling because I'm I'm not going to judge you. And, and I feel like the more people share, the more comfortable everybody becomes, you know, Absolutely. normalize it. And people aren't sure. af as afraid to mm -hmm. come forward and talk about it because talking about it is such Oh my goodness, it's such a release. It's you know, just therapy. It's yeah, therapy. it is. Yeah, it helps people to heal. You know, that's PTSD. That's major trauma, you know? And one thing that I'm proud of with this show, Krista and Brandy, Tex, we invite people on and we're not going to judge you, make fun of you, mm -hmm. or roll our eyes at you because that's what we're here to help people. Because I tell you, the reason, the honest reason why I do this today is for helping others because I was lost and alone and no one helped me. And that was a dark place that I ended up walking into. Mm -hmm. And I never want to have that feeling in my mind, in my soul ever again. Yeah. Or you just feel that you're an outcast. Right. Right. That's terrible. You know what though, BMR? It's probably actually, you may not realize it, but helped you to do this too. It does. Mm -hmm. It, yeah, because I can empathize with people. I know where a lot of people are coming from. You know, I put out that book, and that was from encounter stories I've gotten over the last couple of years from people that didn't want to come on the show, but they wanted to have something therapeutic, you know? And, and a lot of people are like that. A guy mm -hmm. just in chats that took him 23 years before he came forward, if I read that correctly. Yeah. So, but yeah. And that's sad, you know, to keep yeah. that hidden for that long, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. Wow. So anyway, yeah, that was the dog. Man. Anything else with the dog, man, Monica? Was that really the first real? Was that the incident? That was that. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that was, was the one. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. You started out right at the top there. Yeah, I mean, I had you know obviously at that point been pretty heavily immersed into Bigfoot yeah. and yeah. Dog Man was starting to become more well known, and I, I'd heard about it for years, obviously, and I'm just. You know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, they're misidentifying bear. They're misidentifying Bigfoot. They're, you know, it can't be what they're saying it is. But then more and more stories were coming forward. And there were YouTube channels that were coming on dedicated to stories about this. And the more I'm listening to other people's encounters, I'm thinking, well, maybe there is more to it. So I started to pivot away from Bigfoot and towards Dogman. And then this happened. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah cause I was reading your bio that you sent me that one for the for the thumbnail, and you started out in big, 22 years. You've been doing Bigfoot research with cryptids and paranormal. Let's say Bigfoot was your first true, I guess, mm -hmm. love. I guess if that's a, the correct word. Yeah, really, paranormal was my first true love, but I got just really well known for Bigfoot because when I joined the TBRC and started getting out there to all the conferences. And then when Rick Knoll approached me to be on monster quest, that kind of really pushed that for me. Okay. Yeah. But my whole life has been, I, I would say it's mostly paranormal focused, like from a younger age, it was, it was ghosts and that kind of thing, sure. hauntings um, and Bigfoot's just what I'm known for more. Mm -hmm. but I've had, you know, the paranormal my whole life. I've seen things, my whole life you know you see the yeah. shadow people i've seen that my whole life you know mm -hmm. wow. um i've had ghost encounters i live in a haunted house we have a ghost dog running around here <laughs> krista knows that i'm biting my tongue because i do this like a lot i'm not going to do it today we'll have to talk because i krista what i can resonate with a lot of things she's saying right with what mm -hmm. i'm at. Yeah. and my and my pete my audience are probably sick of hearing it but yeah i <laughs> I'm right there with you, and um, and I think it set me on this path. And I do believe. Let me ask you this: If you have an experience at a younger age, you think you're more open to other experiences as life goes forward? I think yes. If you have an experience at a younger age and you keep an open mind with that experience, 
Mm-hmm. That you maybe your mind doesn't close off as much as you age, or you know maybe you had that experience when you were younger because you're just wired to be more susceptible to that, mm-hmm. right? And if you if you keep the interest in it and don't just close your mind to it, then yeah, you're gonna. I, I just feel like your frequency is gonna attract right sure. what's, what's around you, and and if you're not shutting that frequency down. Yeah. yeah, that's something I learned from you guys. All the girls' frequencies, vibrations, and intentions. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, intentions are a little difficult because you 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 have intentions that you are not cognitive of. Yeah, and that can that can happen mm-hmm. too. You can't. No, if your intention is to go into the woods and conjure up the devil. That ain't good. Well, that's pretty. That's a pretty serious intention. But I mean, you can have underlying. Like you're, if you have a stress day, you've got a lower vibration going on. That's mm-hmm. I agree with that. And even if your intention is just go find Bigfoot, I, you know, I talk to people. One time in the woods, they encountered a Bigfoot. They weren't looking for the Bigfoot, much like I was not either. Mm-hmm. And there are people out there that are researchers that have been doing this. 10, 15, 20 years. But I think, like you say, though, they, in their mind, they, their intention is to find Bigfoot. They're running on that low vibration, mm-hmm. right? So they don't see them. A lot of them. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of these guys, and I, I've come across this, 20 years, never seen a Bigfoot. Yeah, they've seen a footprint or the, 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 traditional, <laughs> the traditional evidence, but they're like, well, I don't believe you saw that. I've been doing this for 20 years, son. There's just no way your first time out. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, come on. You know, old man, you know, turn around and, you know, go home. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say, you know, going out and looking for Bigfoot is when I've had some of my, uh, uh, the bulk of my encounters as an adult that were not Bigfoot related because I've really never had anything Bigfoot related. But I mean, when I'm out doing that research is when I've heard the whispering right in the dark, the whispering, Um, seeing the the shadows coming. This is something I have to explain. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. and I've seen this one time in Dallas coming across Monica. Mm-hmm. My 10 second break, Randy. We got to take our 10 second break here. Everybody, subscribe. Bigfoot, Michigan, Rob, the Blondes of Booze Paranormal Podcast, Texas Front Porch, Barton, Nunley, and Humanoids. And thank you, love you all. Thanks for the super chats, Maggie, and um, Scott's life for the memberships. And I think that covers it. it does we're good to go. Okay, Monica, we're good. Okay. Just my cool. <laughs> I hate to be rude like that because I'm, I'm trying to figure out a, a better way to smooth my way into that because we normally do a five-minute break. Oh, sure. And, you know, people just kind of, they let, you know, you lose 20 people. So I'm going to keep them all in here because you're doing such a great job. I will mm-hmm. say. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, so the encounters that I've had as an adult were mostly um, – while I was out doing Bigfoot related research, right? So I had a phantom car roll up on me while I was setting up a training camp one night. I saw like, I don't know what to call it, like a little person, like on the side of the road one night coming back from a research uh, like group setting. We were coming back to camp and I saw it. And, um, you know, the to go back to what I was saying right before the break was, I saw this, the shadow thing that I put out there because I don't know what this was. And I've never heard anybody else talk mm-hmm. about it. Um, Phantoms and Monsters had somebody write in an article. He would just written an article on it where this mm-hmm. woman explained that she saw something similar to me. But, and I wrote back and I was like, please, please, please. Like if you get any of these or anybody knows what this is, let me know because it's driving me up the wall. I've only seen it twice in my life. The first time was in Dallas. I was driving down a freeway and I saw again, something coming towards the road. And I'm thinking it's, Oh my God, it's a black dog. It's going to get hit by a car. Like I'm freaking out. Some, some pretty serious highway I'm going Mm -hmm. down. And there weren't a ton of cars. It was kind of dusk and it's coming like at a steady clip, steady clip, like just like this, it's moving about this fast. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, it's going to hit that car. You know, in the closer I got to it, the more I could tell it was it was absolutely rectangular in shape. 
black, like smoke that mm -hmm. was semi transparent. Like when it was in the grass, it looked opaque because the grass was behind it and it's right. dust. But as it's coming towards the car in front of me, and that's what I thought it was going to hit, like it was going to, you know, run into the car in front of me, it came across the back bumper and I could see the car in front of me was white and I had my headlights on. I could see the black or the white bumper through it, you know, so it was semi translucent. Yeah. Perfectly square, you know, almost on the ground, maybe a little bit above the ground, moving at a straight clip, like a very steady pace, just kept going. And I was at Area X in Oklahoma doing um, a sizzle reel for a TV show. And one of those things I heard rustling in the brush, same time of day, dusk, the same thing came out of the woods from the left, crossed the path in front of me, almost hit my, hu my husband's foot because he was a few paces ahead of me. And kept going. Same thing. Could semi-translucent, blackish smoke color, absolutely rectangular. Never stop. Never slow down. Always going at the same pace. How big do you think it was? It was probably like two and a half feet by. Oh no! I, I mean, I don't. Yeah, about two and a half feet by maybe ten inches. I don't know. I mean, it was it was rectangular. Right. So God. It and you know, I think. I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> right, right. And it's unnerving. I was like, what do you do when you see something? Like, I don't know what that right. is. And then that same night, though, that I saw it in the woods up at X, uh, my husband and I were stationed at this old cabin and we were sitting on the front porch, um, lights out, completely black, uh, inside of an area that had a bear fence, right? So we were sitting inside the bear fence on the front porch of this old shack. And I kept hearing um, this whispering noise. And my husband, I don't know, forgot something at the main camp. So he left me there, right, to go grab it. It's like a 10 minute walk there and back. So I was there alone for about 20 minutes. And I could start hearing whispering. And it sounded like at least three people. Wow. And they were, I mean, my mind's eye, you know, I'm sitting in the dark, so I'm imagining what this is. Mm -hmm. It's like three people, they're clearly people having a conversation, but yeah. it's just far enough away or muffled to where I can't make out the words. Mm -hmm. and they're maybe down in the corner of this property, not far from me, maybe 20 yards, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, you know, pitch black. I'm hearing this. I mean, you can hear. Yeah. I already think that's creepy, and you just did it cutely, but I thought that's creepy. Yeah, it, is. yeah. it was creepy. And I mean, I'm sitting there alone, pitch black, middle of the forest, you know, thinking, <laughs> I thought, what is going on? I'm like, are there witches here? Are there witches in the corner of this? Right. That's immediately what came into my mind. Wow. And, um, I'm just thinking, like, why am I hearing this? I mean, that whole weekend was full of just weirdness. And in a place that we've gone repeatedly, right, for reasons, right. Area X was a big place for the for mm -hmm. the TRC at the time. And, well, there, you know, people claim to have had, you know, different Bigfoot encounters there. There was nothing like this. And I had never encountered anything like this before wow. then or since then in that area, which was just crazy you know but again you know i'm out there specifically for bigfoot research but i've got all this other paranormal stuff going on around me oh yeah, yeah. wow that's that's some weird stuff <laughs> that's... Uh, can you talk about the phantom car yeah <laughs> yeah that one is it, it's not really scary it's just bizarre mm -hmm. so um out in East Texas, uh, the, you know, when I was with the TBRC, we would uh, do training camps and I was in charge of the training camps at that. <laughs> so my friend Melissa and I had headed out there from Dallas. It was like a three or four hour drive to where we were holding this camp. Mm -hmm. And um, the area that we were holding at, this campground has like a main leg with where everybody camps and there's a lake, you know, 
and then it kind of cuts off at the at the northern point it cuts off and then there's a circular camp with five or six camp spots and it's completely separated from the the main campground it's really isolated yeah and it's on a peninsula so you're surrounded by water on three sides and uh my friend and i had gotten there late um we rolled in gosh i don't know, like 12 30 one in the morning uh, another member had gotten there from Louisiana and he was the only other person with our group there. And he had gotten a site in the main campground. And we stopped by and said hi to him. And we were like, hey, you know, we're going to go over there. Come help us set our tent up, you know, if you don't mind. It, sure. You know, it's the middle of the summer. It's stifling. It's disgusting because it's, you know, you're surrounded by water. It's swampy. And so we pull off into this remote area. Uh, to our campsite. And we're the only ones there. Everybody's coming the next day. Mm -hmm. So um, we park. There's no lights in that back area. There's there's a street light back behind you that kind of illuminates the area, but not a not a ton. So I pull in, you know, my headlights are like going off into the swamp. I, I turn my headlights off. I left the car running though because we wanted the air conditioning. And I remember laying my head back, just relaxing. And then I hear a car pull up behind us. And I hear the gravel of the parking space that we're in crunching under tires. You know, I open my eyes, my friends sit next to me. The whole inside of my car is completely illuminated, you know, because there's a car pulling up behind me. Mm -hmm. And I look in my side mirror and I see a perfectly round headlight, you know, with the car pulling up mm -hmm. and then the car engine cuts and I see the light in the headlight go out, but it's like an incandescent light where it goes out mm -hmm. and you see the filament for a minute and then it burns down. It doesn't even dawn on me. The headlights don't do that anymore. <laughs> right. I remember telling my friend, I was like, uh, you know, he could have waited a minute because I wanted to enjoy the air. Like I didn't want to get on me. And I was like, goodness, like I did he could have waited. I don't want to get out. And she's like, I agree. So we, I open my door and I, I start walking to the back of my car and she's getting out too. There's nobody behind me. There is nothing behind me. There's nothing. Wow. Behind me. And I stand like kind of by the trunk and I'm looking across at her and I'm like, you, you saw that, right? Like I wasn't hallucinating. <laughs> like you saw that, right? And she said, yeah, yeah, I saw it. And I heard it. And the whole inside of the car was lit, lit up. Like, Wow. There's something behind us. That's pretty cool though. Yeah. So I got back in the car and I was like, okay, I'm kind of sketched out here. <laughs> you know, yeah. Because I've got to set up a tent and sleep in a tent. There's a phantom car rolling around here. Like yeah. right. Right. Man. I yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, that's kind of cool though. I would have been like real intrigued about the car thing. Okay. I was intrigued and I'm thinking, you know, I mean, there's there's been a couple of other things that happened at that specific campground, mm -hmm. uh, which is a Corps of Engineers campground. So it's not and like that, it's was state. that. And what uh, state was that again? I'm sorry. In Texas, it's in Texas, East yeah. Texas, yeah. East, real East, close East, to the yeah. border. Of yeah. Course. Okay. yeah, of course, East Texas. Yeah, mm -hmm. swampy. Yeah, swampy. <laughs> yeah. That's in the big thicket for sure. But I'm thinking, you know, this place is has got a lot of like creep fat. Like it's creepy. It is creepy. Mm -hmm anyway like I, I at one point i couldn't get in the gate like we were i had some people camping in there like and i was thinking i couldn't get the the arms to raise it was after hours so i was like i'll just park my truck here and i'll walk you know it's like what a three quarters mm -hmm. of a month, so half a mile glenn dennison is wondering what make and model year the car was <laughs> she's in the lights glenn <laughs> 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 oh yeah that that place is creepy i've had something follow me like shadow me in the wood line at night oh yeah yeah, yeah that drives that's, me nuts. that's that's creepy that drives you nuts. yeah I, yeah that's not cool i mean i've had it happen i had it happen to me when i was younger up in oregon because i'd spend my summers in uh southwest oregon you know in um mm -hmm. douglas county in a pretty you know rural area and my cousins and i would go running at night and we we called it the highway just because it was the only like asphalt road in the area, <laughs> but right. it was by no means a highway. And uh, 
we'd run to this bridge and back because we knew it was exactly a mile to the bridge and a mile back to the house. We could, you know, keep track mm -hmm. of how far we were going. And at one point, like I was, I was done. I'm, I'm not athletic like my cousin was. She could run eight miles and, you know, mm -hmm. I ran a mile and was like, oh, I'm going to die. You know, okay. so I was not, I was not having a good time right then. And on the way back, we and she was kind and she was walking next to me, and there was something like trailing us, tracking us, like keeping oh, wow. up the hill in the tree line. We couldn't really see it, and um, we'd stop, it'd stop, we'd walk, it'd walk. My cousin, you know, and of course she could have been right. It could have been a bear. Mm -hmm. You know, like oh my god, it's a bear. And she took off running, and left me. Left if I don't see a bear stopping when you stop. <laughs> huh? I don't see a bear stopping when you stop. You know, I don't either. Up in the know, woods. Especially looking back on it. I mean, at the time mm -hmm. I was like, you know, know, like 15, 14, 15. Um, wow. Sounds like you're lucky, honestly. Because if it was, you know, a bipedal predator, human form or, or you know, any other inhuman form, you know. Still and scary. again, and, and again, the thing too, you guys, is, is this, you know about being followed you know from the wood line from the shadows mm -hmm. you know i a guy was telling me a story about how it was dusky dawn and he was in his car and he was he felt that he was being watched from mm -hmm. inside his car creeped out right and and he felt he was being followed then he's seen from the wood line these glowing red eyes oh and, he's, and he's driving 15 20 miles an hour so he goes i'm getting i'm out of here right and he could go that fast, though, because I think at this this particular time it was like a dirt road, and there was a lot of bumps in it and, and ditch and um, holes, potholes. So, but he said once he got to like 55, 60 miles an hour, he finally didn't see it. But lo and behold, he's doing forty five or fifty, and he sees the red eyes pop up again. And I'm thinking, wow. see, that's why I always wonder. There's no animal that runs fifty miles an hour. Unless you're a cheetah, right? In the right. in the what in the woods, you know, you're running through brush, you're running through the dense woods, and so he's telling me when he gets home and he lives in the woods, he lives in like a, in a meadow, and he's got the tree line and like a horseshoe. The next yeah. night he's on his porch and he saw from the wood line those red eyes. This thing followed him home. I don't know. That's scary. Wow. I mean, so to me, that's something that just can't be. It's something else. Yeah, and that's why I, I'm going to ask you this. I think that when it comes to cryptids, paranormal, ghosts, aliens, I believe all these things are related in some form. Now, no, a ghost is not Bigfoot. I get it. But then you have the spiritual version of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, yeah. and you've got a lot of people see Bigfoot, and then they see uh, an alien a craft, the mm -hmm. UFO, or orbs. Somebody asked if you saw orbs ever too, Monica, and you can answer that in a minute. But so yeah, so my thing is this: a lot of these things, they're similar yet different and related, but yet mm -hmm. not. If that makes yeah. any sense to you, it does. I mean, I believe it's all connected somehow, whether it's through vibrations, energy. I don't know what it is, okay. but it's, mm -hmm. I can see where it's all connected because I think the people that that have and i don't know what makes you this way but people that have these experiences you know throughout their lives you're clearly in a state that's attracting this yeah mm -hmm. right and, and that's what's connecting it i think you know yeah yeah absolutely whatever that looks like vibrations or like i said energy i don't know right right can you talk a little bit about the little little person you saw <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it, I, it's another story that I'm just now talking about because again, mm -hmm. at my point where I don't care what people think, <laughs> but it was at this campground that I'm talking about. We, I had led um, a group of ladies, and we were camping at this particular campground in that remote area. Because anytime I go here, that's the only area I want to be in. Because mm -hmm. you're separated from the main campers, you can do your thing in, in isolation. Okay. And we were driving in after doing our research. I was in the back seat of a truck, right? So two ladies in the front seat, they were having a conversation. I was just in the back. It was late. It was I don't know, like three in the morning we were coming back. And I'm looking out the side window and 
I see we were on the stretch because there is a little bit of a road from the main campground over to this isolated one that we stay mm -hmm. on. And I'm looking and there's there's there are lights on the road, you know, back towards the, the main campground and, and just to the edge of the road that takes you to the remote. And mm -hmm. I see this, <laughs> this little dude walking you know, in the grass, the separator for, you know, there's the road, the grass, and then the tree line. And he's like closer to the tree line, but walking in the grass. Right. Just walking. And he, he looks like, I don't know, like a gnome. He, I don't know how else to, it's an elf, a gnome. And he looks like a. Did he have clothes on? Yes, he had clothes on. They were earthy toned clothes. Right. Okay. okay. He had a hat on, if I remember correctly. And he had just this really mean looking face. Like he did not look friendly and he didn't acknowledge me didn't turn and look at me didn't look at the truck didn't look at anything but i'm looking at this walking along the side of the road i'm looking again and then these two ladies are having a conversation i'm like do you see this and, I'm right. looking. and you know they didn't they didn't see anything and yeah wow yeah and so we get back to camp i go into my um SUV because that's where I was sleeping. I didn't bother with the tent. I just slept in the back of it. I think I had an exterior at the time. And I was the first campsite that you would come to on that road, right? If you're coming into camp. And I'm thinking, <laughs> of course I am. So <laughs> I got into bed and I just prayed I would one fall asleep quickly, two not have to get up and have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night because I was afraid. I was afraid that I would wake up and there'd be this ugly because it, it did not have a friendly, nice looking face. There would be this ugly face looking in the window at me. Right. And all I could think of, and this is so funny, I could think of that little thing from Cat's Eye. Have you seen Stephen King's Cat's Eye? Yeah. Oh yeah. The little goblin that mm -hmm. is oh, yeah. okay. throughout the film. Like that, but taller. And it, it creeped me out. It creeped me out so much. Sure. I was just like, please, <laughs> please, I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna get, you know, I am not going to the bathroom. Please let me stay asleep until the sun comes up. How far away from your camp was it? Where was your sighting? I don't know that far. I mean, I would be lying if I gave you a distance. I mean, it wasn't far. It was. It's a little, like kind of a gooseneck road wow. from the end of the um, the main camp area over around into where we camp. So maybe eighth of a mile. You know, it wasn't that far. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Interesting. And those gnomes, there's so many things, there's so many topics, there's so many things we can talk mm -hmm. about. And I was talking to this fellow again, you know, I get these emails and there's a story about a guy talking about the gnomes, mm -hmm. garden, near garden gnomes. And he had these gnomes in his yard for forever, four or five years. He had like four or five little statues, like a lot of people do. And he never moved them around. He always had them in the same spot never moved them never changed them. he might have moved them around if he redid some gardening he pulled weeds you know basic things like that he had no kids or nothing mm -hmm. and then he was in the forest and he had thought much much like you monica he saw some little guy mm -hmm. and he told me he was like dressed in like possum skin it was like it was like a little two foot three foot guy but dressed in like squirrel fur mm -hmm. like zip zip, zip you know, okay. zipping across the road Stop, looked at him, said it kind of scowled. Um, and he's like, okay. I'm like, wow, okay, that's pretty interesting. And then he said, wouldn't you know, when I got home, all of his gnomes were all rearranged. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? I mean. Yeah. yeah, mm, yeah. And, and the reason I said he had no kids is because my first thought was, well, you must have kids. Right. You don't know. Not, not living with them, they're all grown and, and moved out. So, is there, you think, I don't believe in really coincidences at all. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if that, again, I'm, I was trying to figure it out for the guy. We're talking back and forth, and I'm like, did that little gnome of the woods know we lived and, and rearranged the statues, or did they take on a life of their own? Good question. Oh, yeah. And yeah. what kind of message was that? Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Having seen that thing and then having your gnomes rearranged, I would just yeah, I would I be would, like yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm like you. I don't believe in coincidence. That 
He had a visit from somebody. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, stop, that, there was a, a, that's great, Chris. I, there's a message somewhere for that gentleman or whoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. You didn't see anything, man, or I'm back for your gnomes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a question for both of you guys. So, you know, I personally have witnessed, you know, ghosts. I uh, had a Bigfoot encounter last year. I had one several years ago that I didn't know was a Bigfoot encounter. But the two of you have had everything from like, you know, elementals, ghosts, dogmen, Bigfoot. Why do you think that is that some people have more encounters than others? I'll just go first because I always like to answer, ask that question. I think now the more I've been doing this, I'm like, well, way more open minded. I saw a ghost when I was a kid. It's funny you mentioned Scooby Doo, Monica, and I kid you not, and I tell it straight. I don't make this stuff up. My first ghost was the Scooby Doo ghost. So I thought it was a dream from Scooby Doo. Mm hmm. And I was wide awake. I woke, I woke up my brother. He didn't see nothing, but I'd seen this thing traipsing about the back wall. Mm -hmm. I saw it 20 years later when I got married. Same thing in my house. And my wife woke up my wife. So, and then I told, and I can sense, I can sense people, their intentions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, to answer your point, I think it's just my mind is always just open to everything. As a yeah, little kid, mm -hmm. I believed in stuff. As a little kid, I saw a ghost. That yeah. I had the shadow people experience. So, and even when I saw my Bigfoot, it wasn't the thing that scared me most. That thing's not supposed to exist. But what scared me the most was when Cindy got knocked in the water and I sure. thought she was drowning. So, for me, I think this my mind is just open to it more so than most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and but I don't, but I don't go looking for this stuff either. When no. I mentioned Monica about intentions, when I go out, I don't intend to find anything. Oh, I, I go out and just say, I'm right. going hiking. If I come right. across something, I come across something. Mm -hmm. well, I might just say, "Hey guys, what's happening?" Mm -hmm. I'm talking to my, you know, like I'm talking mm -hmm. to myself, or I'm talking to the, as I say, the elementals, right? The, for, right. the people of the forest, and I don't necessarily mean Bigfoot, just because to me, the forest, I always say, is like the internet. You know, you have all these, all the life in the forest, all the branches, the vines. It's all intermingled for thousands and thousands of miles depending on the size of your forest, and they all communicate. Mm -hmm. I believe trees communicate with each other, right? I think all Mother Nature communicates in one form or another. And it led me to believe that trees are portals for some of these Bigfoot creatures, too. So yeah. that's just kind of... But to answer your question, yeah, I just think... Cause, and I never thought this about myself until really doing this Having the open mind is knowing that we're not the only people on this planet, the only universe. There are aliens. There's Bigfoot. There's Dogman. There's ghosts. There's the elementals. There's everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's this whole unseen world, you know, and I think that the people that have the open mind and I mean, I'm, I just recently I'm, I've gotten into believing like vibrations so much because like you rob i don't go with the intention like i'm gonna see a bigfoot i'm gonna see it i'm just there in the moment right and i have always been open-minded right with things I've, I've always and i don't know what sparked this interest in it as a young child i don't know if it's the scooby-doo episodes i don't know if it's my grandfather you know sharing stories with me but it stuck and it was a deep fascination from the time I could read, I would check out books on anything I could find that was unusual, paranormal, cryptid, folklore. I, from the time I could read and get into the library, I was reading. Mm -hmm. Oh like, yeah, I was the same way. I was really mad because when I saw Leonard Nimoy in search of mm -hmm. Bigfoot Patty, Patterson Gimlin, I went to my library the next day in school because I was probably a kid, grade school, looking for a book. So I started reading at a young age, but um, I, uh, the only thing, I, you couldn't find nothing back then in the library yeah. on Bigfoot. It was just, and if you did, it was like some, something dumb. Cartoonish or something. Cartoonish, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the internet older. is so amazing for me because like you say, Rob, like when we were younger, you know, we were limited to what the library had to offer us, which right. was not a lot. It was not a lot. 
Mm -hmm. And just the ability, like I went nuts with on the web when, you know, I'm able to research this because, you know, I'm old enough that in my mind, if I don't make that connection, you know, oh, you know, I used to be interested in that. We just didn't have the books on it. Now I'm like, oh, I can I can search, (laughs) you know, so I use the Internet as much as I can. And, you know, we have half price books here, which is a humongous like used bookstore and they have a giant paranormal in, in folklore section. Yeah. So I'll go peruse that and, you know, get all the information that I want, all these, all these stories from hauntings, old legends in, yep. you know, Britain, uh, you know, Ireland, all of those places. I mean, it's just the internet, especially, but you know, the larger bookstores now selling mm-hmm. the used books and the old books and, you know, all of that combined just his, it, it's such an incredible source of information that, you know, coming from the, the age that I am coming from such limited resources to right. you just being available now, I go nuts. I love it. I love it. You know, but you know, really bummed me out about going to college was everything, every paper I had to research. Now, don't get me wrong. I liked doing research reading books, using microfiche. Remember the card catalog? I went to U of M, right? And then I had to type all my papers. And wouldn't you know, at the year I graduate, the this thing called the internet, where all these kids now, they got so easy, man, doing their research when we actually had to do the work. Yeah. But I think we're better off because of it, because we actually had to read this stuff and look it up. Yes. Half and these kids probably cut right? base. That's true. You had to be resourceful too. Like you had to depend on yourself to get the information. Where yeah, yeah. and we didn't have Google. No, no, we had a um, <laughs> index card library, which was right. so much or an encyclopedia. Yeah. Yeah. I think they came out with the word processor right before I graduated because I paid. I didn't pay. My mom did it for me. I had. I would send. I would mail because I. My mom lived. I lived in Ann Arbor for a while. Well, my last two years. I would physically either ride because it's only 52 minutes from back and forth. I would literally take all my papers, drop them off at my ma's. I'd go party on a week and expect my mom to type them. And she could not <laughs> use whiteout either. If there was whiteout, I made her retype it. Oh, Rob. No, I didn't. Taskmaster you. No, I <laughs> yeah. But we were paid. But we, okay, Monica, you probably paid people. I, I sucked at typing. Mm-hmm. Not I great at it. Pretty fast. I can type like, I don't know, like now, I'm good at it now. Yeah. Yeah. Back when you're 20, 18, 19, 22 years old, I didn't type. I was typing. Yeah. I was 12, but that's, I, that, I, yeah, I, that's I, worst upon me. My I was senior a good old year typewriters of, back then, you know. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, everybody. My senior year of high school, and I already got into school, so I didn't care, and I had enough credits to graduate. I failed typing. <laughs> Did you really? Uh, you I, I, I got a D. I really got a D. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Nothing. I never went to class. That's my la- I never went to class. I just yeah. Okay, that was, yeah, okay, that'll do it. Because I could sign. I was the age majority, so I could sign myself out at eighteen. So I skipped that dumb class. Because I took it because I thought there'd be nice looking girls in it. It didn't even dawn on me when I was in high school because I was eighteen the last half of my senior year. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's funny but yeah so wow but anyway monica has a few questions for her oh okay yeah go th- uh away. river morris asks question for monica from down under have you seen orbs i have seen orbs like actual lights up in the trees orbs mm-hmm. Not the things that people film in houses that are probably dust particles. I have seen, um, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've seen them in the Pacific Northwest. I did see an orb in Colorado. And this is really weird because we were in the South San Juan wilderness area. I had taken a group of guys um, dispersed camping. We were hiking through the outback up in the mountains there. We were at a pretty decent altitude too. But anyway, we were, we had our camp in a valley and we would go up into the hills or the mountains, or should, it's Colorado, mm-hmm. they were mountains, uh, at night and we'd look down on the camp because we, you know, try to make it seem like somebody was in camp, seeing if anything would come investigate. 
All right. So um, my husband and I were on one camp. A group of friends were further down in another. And we see a red light just come down the trail, mm -hmm. come into our camp, and then just kind of meander through the tents and then blink out. And we at first thought it was one of the guys from the other mm -hmm. just, you know, giving up the ghost and coming in for the night because we'd use red lights. No, we all, you know, we're on the radios when it was time to quit. Everybody was accounted for and like nobody had come into camp or right. we could not figure out what that light mm -hmm. was. And in East Texas, I have seen orbs up in the trees. And, you know, these are 50, 60 feet up. They're not fireflies, because if you've ever encountered a firefly, mm -hmm. I mean, very yeah, you definitely tell the difference. Yeah, they blink in and out, and they're right. not large. These were solid lights, mm -hmm. not emanating a ton of light, but definitely right. it, um, up in the tops of the trees, which was fascinating. I have no idea, like, what yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about with the orbs because uh, we we saw them one time at the land between the lakes. And it was the middle of winter. We were the only ones out there. Nobody was walking around the woods at that time. And that wasn't there was like ten or twelve of us there, and it wasn't just one or two of us saw them. We all saw them all evening long, in and out, different right. sizes, different colors. So that's um, interesting. That was, yeah, that was that was real. That was an interesting night for sure. So I've seen the, I don't know if this counts as an orb, but I've seen the Bragg Road ghost light. That was, oh, wow. a, that was, cause you know, no matter how close you got to it, this is what was fascinating. No matter how close you got to it, mm -hmm. it stayed the same size and it would get smaller and bigger and smaller and bigger. And it would kind of move from side to side mm -hmm. but then it would just blink out. Wow. And when I saw it, I was, I was at first thinking, cause I don't know if you're familiar with Bragg road here in Texas, but it's a pretty straight dirt gotcha. road. Okay. It's got the old, you know, dude with the lantern ghost story. Behind it. <laughs> sure, <right. laughs> and, um, I had gone there with my husband one night and it was late. It was after a storm. I remember it had been raining mm -hmm. and it was maybe 11 30, 12 at night, which is late for us. And, I remember when we turned onto Bragg Road, it, it's a dirt road and there were no other tracks like because it had just rained. So it was pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. And so we go down almost all the way to the end. And um, we had our young son with us at the time. He was getting fussy and I was like, hey, it's time to go. Let's go. So right. we turn around and come back and I only see our tire tracks coming, coming in. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm looking and I'm like, this light looks like a motorcycle coming at us. And it's getting bigger and smaller. And the closer we got to it, my son started freaking out more. Right? Yeah. And um, it got bigger, 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 smaller. No matter how my husband accelerated going towards it, stayed the same size and then blinked out. And we were maybe, you know, three fourths of the way down back to the end of the road so we could go home. Yeah. And I'm looking, because there are residences off of this road, right? And I'm, as we're passing them by, I'm looking to see, is there tire tracks? Sure. Motorcycle, you know, to be coming in. Am I seeing footprints? You know, because we're not going so fast that I'm going to miss something like that. You just can't on the mud. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing. There was just our tracks. And we got to the paved road and nothing. You know, wow. So wow. I, I really feel that that was the ghost light at Bright Road. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, William Bays asks, Monica, does your family have a psychic history? Yes. And yeah, I mean, if you speak <laughs> on my mother's side, I would say that, that mm -hmm. they feel very strongly that, that they have intuition. Right. And I believe that everybody does, you know, mm -hmm. it's just whether or not you pay attention to it and, right. you know, encourage it and develop it. Mm -hmm. um, I have felt, and this sounds really weird, but I have felt death. I can, like, if death is nearby, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend pass away a couple of years ago and I leading up to his death, which was a sudden death. 
by the way. Mm -hmm. He had a heart attack on the job site and just didn't make it. But I would say a couple weeks leading up to his death, I could feel, if this makes any sense, death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this sense of an ease, like it's like it's death. I yeah. felt it before. Yeah. But this was so strong. This was so strong. And it was, um, and I'm thinking this is somebody close to me or it's me. You know, and I really thought it was me because I I don't know who it is. I just feel death. Now. Right. It was like real strong. And um, he, I, I mean, it was so intense and I, I couldn't tell who it was, but I knew it was somebody that was close. Mm -hmm. And I, I really didn't think it was like my husband, you know, uh, my son, I, I didn't think it was any of my children at that time. And he, I remember telling my husband, like, I don't like death, death is nearby. Death is nearby. I know this sounds nuts. I know it sounds, but I really like it's, it's near and I don't know who it is. And because I don't know who it is, I like, I, it, I think it might be me. Yeah. Okay, so oh, I, I gave him a whole list. I was like, I just want you to know that, you know, I want you to tell my son, Lucas, I was like, tell him you love him every day, encourage him in everything he does, remind him of me, like show him pictures of me, tell, remind him that I loved him more than anything. You know, like I'm giving my husband's instruction to like for how I want my child to be raised. Right. Because I think it's me. Mm -hmm. The night that I sent him this long text message explaining that to him, the next morning is when my friend died on the on a job site, like just had a heart attack. Wow. And yeah. so I, I I believe that our family has something. I, I, but I believe everybody does. I really do. I believe everybody has that. And it's just whether you pay attention to that intuition. I agree. Yeah. Intuition. Yep, it is. That's... um. I tell you what, when you got that feeling, you got that feeling, mm -hmm. and I I found that it's always right. Mm -hmm. For me, it is. If Trust your gut. It, it's wrong. Oh Absolutely. my God. Trust your gut. If your gut says something is wrong with the situation you are in, it is. Get out. Of it. Get away from it. Just get out. Well, with that being said, I do have to tell you this. Chris knows where I'm going with this. When I was five or six years old. Okay, I could always I could pick out kids that I liked, I thought were good or bad, good or bad, or that I would like. Mm -hmm. This kid, Jimmy, fifth or sixth grade, and I was a five or six year old. And I told my mom and dad I thought he was evil. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad, what five or six year old says the word evil? At least not back when I was growing up. You didn't right. use that word, right? What are you talking about, evil? You know, my dad. What are you talking about, evil? I don't, I don't like him. Well, don't play with him. Well, he lives down a block. He comes over all the time, blah, blah, blah. So never liked the kid, never liked him at all. As I got a little older, older in middle school, I would tell my friends. And again, Jimmy, I went through five years old, middle grade school, middle school, junior high, high school with this kid, Jimmy. And I, as I got older throughout my school, my schooling years, I would tell my friends, stay away from Jimmy. He's bad news. Oh, Rob, whatever, man. Just leave him alone. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I am leaving him alone, but don't hang out with him. Right. So they think you're just being whatever you're being. And I did that throughout it all, all up and through high school. Senior year, we're playing soccer and we had shirts for skins. You know, that's guys some wore shirts, some right. off the shirt, blah, blah, blah. I run into Jimmy. I still hate this kid. And I, and I don't hate people. But there's something about this kid, or I thought he was just an evil dude guy. So we get tangled up, and we're rolling around together, and our bodies are touching. And I got this feeling in my mind that scared me, like I was touching something evil. Mm -hmm. I just got I I got goosebumps. It's summertime. I'm sweaty. I'm getting goosebumps. I push my way, get away from this kid. I run away from this kid. Rob, what are you doing? You know the what are you doing? What are you running the opposite way of the of the net for? No, man, I don't know. I just got some mud in my eye or something. Which I told my friends. I got and I told my mom the story throughout my life. I tell my family about this kid and my best friends. I go off to college. I graduate. I come home and my mom and dad go. You know that kid Jimmy who you would call the evil one, the kid that you didn't like. You had a bad feeling about him. I'm like, yeah. And then he, my friends then would bring it up later after my mom and dad told me, corroborated the story. 
Jimmy, Rob, you were right. Jimmy is in prison for murdering his grandmother. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so right down in there is a little kid. And to this day, I can walk into a mobile gas station, meet you, and in under a minute, I can assess you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Very easy. It's Absolutely. very easy for me to do. Mm -hmm. I can read people right. like books. Yep. Yeah. You are hiding nothing from me. I, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and, and again, I think a lot of people have that. So I don't really think me I'm too. unique to it, but just like when I owned the bar for 13 years, I didn't even, you know, I certain applications I read, but if I met you, I knew that you wouldn't rip me off. And I, tr and I tried myself against that where I hired a person that I knew would steal from me. And sure enough, within two weeks, they stole from me. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. knew, but I did it as an experiment. Yeah. You know, the way I can, can, can feel people. Well, you're reading really the energy, weird. right? It's the energy and the vibrations. Yeah, right? there you go. It's your mind yeah. open, and that's what draws yeah. these you know? crazy experiences yeah. to you. I really think yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and again, I, yeah. Christmas question from way earlier is probably why I can see things as well. Ghosts and cryptids. And yeah, just I believe like, that. Know. Yeah. I had this one guy. Okay, so there's a story about reading people, right? So I, in, I lived in this little town in East Texas and I went to the same gas station every day, right? Every day, coming back from work, I'd have to get gas all the time. My commute was hellacious. And one day they had this new clerk, which normally isn't a big deal. But I remember being parked outside of the gas station, looking in and I see this dude, clearly a new person, no big deal. They, you know, employee turnover, whatever. Uh, but I remember looking at him and I would, I was like, there's something like he's going to be a problem. Like there, there's something with this dude. There's, right. Right. But I couldn't put my finger on it. Just knowing him, yeah. but I don't never seen the dude before I go in, make my purchases, leave. I get home and realize I don't have my wallet on me. Right. Yeah. And my husband calls up there cause it, it was, they had just closed by the time I got home. Mm -hmm. And he's like the, this clerk, answers the phone, this guy I saw through the window. And he said, no, nobody's, nobody's left a wallet. Nobody's, you know. Mm. So my husband worked for the police station, right? He was a dispatcher. He worked with the police. He was a, he was a paramedic. Mm -hmm. So he goes over to the detective and he's like, hey, my wife's wallet. He goes, I'm pretty sure she left it there, but this guy's not, you know, somebody took it. I just want to see who took it. He didn't think it was the clerk, but, you know, clearly yeah. I just want to make sure this is where my wife's wallet was left. Yeah. So the detective goes down there, pulls up the footage. Sure enough, you see me yapping to the guy. I'm talking friendly to him. There's a guy behind me waiting mm -hmm. in line. I put my wallet down. I'm paying. I walk off. My wallet's on the counter. And the person behind me points it out. And the clerk picks up my wallet, looks at it. You can hear him say, oh, yeah, I know her. Puts it down, puts it under the counter goes about his business, helps this guy, gets him out of the store. The guy goes to the back, comes back. You can see him reaching under where he put my wallet, taking it, hiding it behind his back, and then walking out the back door. Oh. So the detective was like, mm, no, you, we got you, buddy. You, you took that wallet. But I mean, just, I mean, it was a whole thing. But, you know. But you knew. In that, yeah, I knew something was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Just and Adam through the window. I just knew it. Yeah. But like Rob, like I can read somebody like you are not hiding anything from me. I'll, I'll be friendly and kind and, you know, I'll yeah. talk to you and pretend like I don't know what's going on, but trust me, I know. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I, I was guilty of smiling at someone and I'm thinking you're such a. Rah, 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 rah. Yep. Yeah. I see you. I see you. Mm -hmm. And it, it just takes talking to him for a few minutes. Right. Yep. That's all it does. Yeah. yeah talk to now, for me, the touching thing, that's the only experience that I've ever had in my entire life because that we were just rolling around and I really did feel petrified. Felt, But now, for me, it's just talking with somebody mm -hmm. for a um, minute or two. Yeah, it doesn't take long. You know, it don't take Yeah, long. that's me. Just, you know, you meet somebody, you you automatically know what kind of person sometimes, they are. Yeah, but sometimes you don't even need to talk to them. You're just like, right? Yeah, I mean, you feel that. And, and, right? again, I, and I hate to be that guy that's like judges someone because maybe they're homeless and you think that, oh, they're just. Oh, I don't think of, yeah. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter if they're homeless or not. It's what's going on. Uh, no, I'm just, just yeah. not just homeless, but what they look like. Right. You mm -hmm. can be dressed to the nines, and I can tell you're a SOL. You're a jerk. Or yeah. you can be wearing, you know, ratted out jeans and a tank top, and you might be a, a genius. You know, I, mean, I, I, I gotta tell you, nice. some of the 
worst ones that you'll find are like masquerading as like very upright yes. proper people. Yeah. And they're the worst. They are the worst. Yep. Yeah, I've experienced those people too. Oh, and that's oh, yeah. That's really creepier. That's more mm-hmm. creepier than the cryptids. Yeah. Yeah. Because nobody believes you. Like nobody sees it. Nobody, or at least I feel like nobody sees it but me. It's true. And if I try to like, you know, gently broach that with other people, they're like, oh, you're nuts. They're the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> well, yep. you know, Monica, we could always talk forever, but uh I know. you know, I know Krista's gotta get up pretty soon, and uh you probably do. And uh, so is there any social media that you want to tell people? Because I know we have, you're coming on doing the show March 28th, uh, but anything else if people want to look you up, email or anything like that? Yeah. So I'm, I don't have anything set up for our paranormal world yet. So, yeah. but I do have um, Instagram accounts. So I've got a morning star, which is one of my Instagram accounts. And I've got Monica underscore Rollins. That's my main just personal account where I put all my, goofiness you're going to really see my personality shine there oh, okay. well, I, could put, I could post those links too in, in this if yeah. you want it's, you know if you want no big deal and uh so thank you for coming this has been a great yeah. show and it's krista been mm-hmm. it's been a lot of fun krista thursday night what you got going on you got i know you got josh is uh sitting in as co-host, josh is co-hosting again Who's and that? we have uh thomas winterton from the secret of yes. ranch yes will be on Thursday night and then Friday I believe we have uh Will Lunsford. Yeah, too. Those are great shows. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Thomas Winterton, I took a shot in the dark not too long ago and three consecutive days I tweeted tweeted Brandon Frugal uh, of uh mm-hmm. the owner. Walker Ranch, the owner. And, well, my third one he liked. So I'm going to hit him up again see what happens. You never know. There you go. There you go. I'm excited to have Thomas on. I've been a fan of that show for a long time, you know. You and know then what? Meet, meet him when we met him down in Texas, and just super, super nice guy. I mean, when when we asked him if he, you know, would come on the show, he didn't even hesitate. He's like, "Of course," you know. Yeah. Cool. You know, I do like the Skinwalker Ranch, and I don't watch regular TV. I don't know where to find it. It's on Netflix, mm-hmm. but the same ones. 2021 is the only one that's on Netflix, and I've seen that. Skinwalker twice. Ranch is on. Um, History Channel, I believe. Yeah. Okay. The, the updated ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think maybe there's I'll, four seasons. Yeah. Maybe I'll check it out. Mm-hmm. So thanks for everybody for coming on in. Uh, thank you once again for uh, Maggie for your awesome super chat. Scott's life gifting five memberships and Very picking nice. up as an additional month. I do appreciate that. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. So I really do appreciate that from everybody. Don't forget to subscribe to Texas Front Porch on YouTube. The Blondes and the yep. Blues paranormal podcast on youtube brunch or not brunch well brunch is thursday but bigfoot mr rob's channel mm-hmm. i got brunch this thursday it'd just be me flying solo but i bring back my guest that comes on every three or four months the cryptid huntress will be joining me i think we're talking i think we're gonna do the dog man island remote cool. view check that out That'd be awesome That'll be cool. Thanks for everyone for coming in. Bart Nunley and Humanoids as well. Wednesday nights at 9. Subscribe to this channel as well. There's so many. There's so many. So many good ones. There is. There are. Oh, can I answer a question real quick? I see in the chat. Yes, you can. River Morris asks if I was close to Coos Bay or am I? I'm in Texas right now, but the areas that I was talking about were in Looking Glass, Oregon, which isn't too, too far from Coos Bay. Awesome. Very cool. Yes, River, uh, thanks for coming on. I think you've been in a couple times, so I think mm-hmm. he's going to be sending me an email. He's got some interesting things going on from down cool. under. Awesome. Very cool. So, yeah, that will be awesome. So thank you, guys. Thanks, for everybody, for coming on in. Um, with that being said, i got to play a text and try to find the extra. Here it is. <laughs> See y'all.